what follows is my interview with Ben Grosser. He's a Illinois-based artist dealing with um, software and uh, social media platforms and their effects uh, upon society. Uh, in this 40 minute or so conversation, he and I uh, talk about his works that intervene on and uh, critique Facebook, including the piece Orders of Magnitude, which are in Through the Mesh, as well as um, many other topics, including, um, you know, this whole notion of, uh, of um, the, the, the politics of platforms and the, uh, and the Facebook papers. So sit back for about the next 40 minutes and enjoy. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Ben Grosser. And um, let's see here, we're showing uh, his video, uh, Orders of Magnitude, in the, um, in the exhibition. And for those in the audience who have been uh, living in a cave without a computer or a uh, smartphone, um, who don't know who you are, um, let's, uh, um, can you, let's, let's, let's talk about, um, you know, your, your body of work and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, happy to. Sure. I, would you mind? Uh... Um, yeah, oh, well, sure. so, so what do you do, Ben? Well, yeah, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, my focus is on the cultural, social and political effects of software, thinking about how the way a, a piece of software is designed can have dramatic effects on those who use it. Um, yeah. And also the ways in which the ideologies of those who make software gets embedded in that software and then kind of spreads out to the user base um, through the through the code and, and, and through the interface design and and through the the way that that uh, software's wants kind of amplify and, and spread mm -hmm. uh, so that leads me to make work in a variety of media from ai robots to computationally produced video to sound and um, musical works, uh, mm -hmm. but often uh, I'd say the bulk of my practice is a, is a net art focus, right. um, often the writing of code, uh, mm -hmm. the writing of software as a way of investigating software. And I, mm -hmm. I put that code in between the user and the system, uh, often uh, big tech platforms as a way of uh, investigating how those platforms work, who they work for, who they work against. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's an overview. Sure, sure, sure. And, uh, you know, you're, as I was saying earlier, you're kind of the um, artist of the hour with the creation of uh, creation of meta and all the interventionist works that you've done on the Facebook platform. You know, like, uh, as, as we see here up go rando, which uh, randomizes your likes that deals with the, uh, you know, that messes with the uh, waiting algorithm on, and then uh, the demetricator and, uh, and then you know, just a lot of stuff like that. And then uh, you were just showing uh, uh, Infinite Doom Scroller over at, over at Arbyte, yeah. which, is a, which is a fun piece. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's been 10 years of work on Facebook. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, a 10 year pass so far of, of, of works that directly intervene on Facebook, but then also works like uh, Endless Doom Scroller and others that are, and Platform Sweet Talk is a new one from that exhibition too, that, that are, um, drawing on Facebook either directly or indirectly in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, as a, as a, as a structure to investigate and, and, and often to reduce in some way to down to its barest essentials as a way of understanding what it's doing. Sure, sure, sure. So, so basically what's, what's going on here is, is that where, you know, of course, where you're fitting in here is the concept of the show is basically investigating the uh, intersection between Foucaultian biopower and, you know, what I'm calling info power, which is, you know, basically the uh, almost like the rise of the informatic nation state, which and and notions of um, normalization, which, you know, Adam Curtis, you know, was taught, you know, it, is talking about, a, you know, basically certain practices in the informatic sphere that we just wind up um, uh, just accepting. And then the other thing that you know, when I was living in the Middle East is that I've been, I was watching China, Russia, and Iran all looking at, you know, how that they, how that they could just basically, um, you know, do, um, um, was it uh, countrywide 
separations from the net and just basically lift off like motherships. And then, you know, looking at that, looking that from the notion of the informa informatic notion of the nation state, but then taking, you know, the, the notion of the stacks on top of that, you know, in, in other words, it's like, you know, just in the beginning saying, you know, like Facebook, just Facebook now meta is, you know, now trying to, trying to, trying to put itself between its users and reality or creating a, 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 another reality and being a second life artist as long as I have been, I'm just going, oh, oh come on, you know, and, um, but, uh, <laughs> You know, the thing is, is that they, it's not, I, I look at Facebook and I see it at a, almost as tech, this tectonic plate that's, that's, this, that's this shroud go, tend, tendrilling around the world out of, you know, out of Silicon Valley. And the thing is, is, but however, kind of like a mile or two off of the uh, surface of the earth and that sort of thing. But the thing is, is that in, in one way or another, it's, it's a... It's it has just as much power as a nation state as we saw when the when the system went down uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the thing is is that um, I think what's what's interesting to me is the uh, are the discontinuities you know between the borders and the you know and the protocols between you know these 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 two layers of of power and how they're not can not 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 contiguous with each other. And yeah. so, so how do you feel about that? I mean, you know, no question. Facebook, I think, has uh, the the reach and the and the level of power that that a corporation like Facebook has is really unparalleled in history. I, I don't think we're really prepared for how to deal with it. And as governments like the United States, even um, yeah. starts to make moves towards at least gestures in the direction of regulation, gestures in, in the direction of desiring regulation. I don't know that they'll yeah. ever actually do any that, that's meaningful. It seems very unlikely. But I think part of the reason they won't is because they're going to run up very quickly against the actual power of, of a corporation that controls what 3 billion humans see of the world yeah. every day. And, you know, the, the ways in which... I mean, we, we literally are in a moment where uh, 3 billion and growing, of yeah. course, always growing. Got to have more. Got to have more. Got to grow. Got to grow. The, the potential for, I mean, you know, Facebook is unprecedented, not just in its scale and its growth and its, its speed. Um, you know, it's the fastest corporation in the history of capitalism to reach a $1 trillion yeah. market capitalization. Um, but it's, it's also unparalleled in its corporate structure whereby Mark Zuckerberg literally has absolute power over the board, over the rest of the C-suite. Um, yeah. you know, whatever he wants is what he gets and nobody can really do anything about it. And so that creates an even worse than normal culture of everyone agreeing with Mark, if you want to have proximity to Mark. Mm -hmm. and, and and so you know this is some of what's been coming out lately with the with the Facebook papers is some people have been trying to not fix things but to maybe slow down the destruction of things yeah. that Facebook's been involved in and yeah. you know by by bringing things to, to the attention of of Mark and he just overrules it I mean you know if it it's always about growth and it's about artificial targets for growth you know I mean. Yeah. I would think, I don't know about you. I would think that if you have a trillion dollars, yeah, that, that that makes an opportunity to spend some money on things, to see what happens, to be experimental, to try something out. And that it gives you the luxury of trying something out that may mean you're not that you aren't going to make profit, but that the rate of profit acquisition is maybe yeah. slightly less in order right. to do something and weird right. and strange and maybe yeah. good um anyway i'm on you know i of course i could go on this forever but i i think you know the power of the facebook is in controlling what we all see which yeah. normalizes for the population of the planet sure what we think 
makes it, it's not just it controls what we see but it keeps telling us over and over that the way we think the world is is that way it, it builds then, an ontology yeah it really you know it continually reinforces and then narrows our perspective because the more we show it the more we make ourselves legible to it which of course it's yeah always trying it's always convincing us to do that so the more we make ourselves legible to it the more it says yeah you're right this is exactly what the world is like it's just like what you think it should be mm -hmm. and it does individually for each of us so that we can get in these little groups and fester and 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 really spin on some tiny amount of information that that has that may be contradicted by everything else in the world but it doesn't really matter as long as it looks right to us on the field well, those, so, well those of us with a certain amount of you know socioeconomic privilege you know to you know to, to have this stuff and i mean there's four billion four billion people you know that of course mark would love to meet but you know it's just a matter of that and that's you know, who he's focused on more than anybody else. And, and that's been the case for a while now that, um, I mean, one of the things I learned in, in making the film Order of Magnitude, you know, in, in spending quality time with every word Mark has spoken <laughs> for 15 years, yeah, uh, is that when he, you know, the, in the first, mm, let's see, nine years of, of the company, yeah. The, the the number that he's that that's go that's most consistently going up and up and up that he speaks throughout those nine years is the yeah. user number. right you know you know we first hear about it in this low in the hundred thousands and then the millions and the hundreds of millions yeah. and then eventually in the billion and etc sure. when he gets to about two billion which is around 2013 if i recall correctly or maybe at least approaching um he starts talking about a different number which is whatever it was at the time, six billion. It's, yeah, it's he has left. You know, it's like he he and that's when he launched his um, internet.org and, and starts thinking about how can he use Facebook to be the internet to the to the rest of the world that doesn't yet have it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's I mean, that's one thing that I saw it said, it, basically, they were giving away, um, you know, Facebook time and whatnot in Pakistan you know right. and you know and or you know even giving away phone, you know i i don't know where they were giving away phones but they were you know they were they were um you know giving away free you know data service you know so they could they could be on facebook yeah in india they do it in africa they they um you know it's part of that it's part of teaching the planet that the internet is facebook yes and yeah. and and it works quite well i mean just like a generation, you know, bef uh, from the, the late 20th century felt like AOL was the internet or going back even, you know, I mean, we could go further, you know, or backwards in that trajectory, but. Um, yeah, well, you know, what I think is very interesting is how, you know, is how Ready Player One was referring to CompuServe. Right, you know, was, you know and, 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 and you know, the thing is, is that I'm saying, you know, I, I say only old nerds like us, you know, that uh, that yeah. were possibly, I mean, I was on CompuServe and it was out of Columbus, Ohio, and that's why that's, you know, that's, that's why the protagonist was in Columbus, Ohio. You know, it's like, you know, people are saying, you know, my students, you know, in their 20s are saying, why in the hell is that guy in Columbus, Ohio? Because that's where this whole net culture kind of got born. And this is where the, your animated GIFs were you know created in the late in the late 80s which is the longest run you know the 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 animated cat gif is the longest longest running you know archival form of of net media you know which i think is absolute uh, absolutely fitting yes you know yeah. so i mean you know that's you know that's 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 the thing so you know but um so you know the the idea of um well, what was the name of the metaverse and, and Ready Player One? Um, oh. uh, uh, that thing. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've, yeah, yeah. I've... In other words, they're they're very, you know. So, what what you know what what is it with the notion of the, of you know the? I I think what's what's interesting is there's this there's this kind of like snow crash trope, you know, of the idea of creating a parallel, you know, universe, which is you know. Uh, I think it's great with the, like the, 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 the meta um, demo tape. It's like, well, it's exact. It, you know, it, it's exactly like real life, but it's better. 
you know, and I, I, you know, seeing, you know, Zuckerberg saying, oh, what do I want to wear? I said, oh, I want to, I want to wear an avatar that looks just like me. And I'm just, it's like, because that's perfect. And uh, then I'm going to go, you know, meet my friends who are probably actually having fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like one of the Oasis, by the way, I think. Oasis, really yeah, yeah. But, well, you know, what we had is that, you know, we had, if we want to go back, we can say, you know, Palace, um, um, was it, um, um, what, uh, what, something, Worlds, um, and then Second Life, and, you know, Second, Second, Second Life is, you know, meta 1.0, you know, and so, and the thing is, is that the, the one thing that I think is really interesting is that Second Life, although it has a large user churn, uh, statistics, there was a, uh, Wagner James Al put out, out a, uh, article, uh, just recently saying, you know, saying that there's basically about a 30, uh, I think it's, a 30,000 person concurrency at all mm-hmm. times, you know, wow. which is, you know, with over, I think the 18, 19 years of second life has been around that's, and I, I will, I, I, I will completely slap some you know the the second life is saying oh it's just in its infancy i said no this is this is a robust stable platform with an established base and a you know and a and a and a constant foundation you know and so the thing is is that now the thing is is that i think that in some ways um let's see um i think that I think that uh, the meta folks have been, you know, out in second, a second life reading snow crash. And actually one of my old students is now one of the people inside meta's social engine, you know, social group and that sort of thing. And he just got the, he just got the um, um, indoctrination lecture the other day. And he, so he, he wrote me and saying, you know what, what was really interesting is that they're, they're, they're actually quoting McLuhan. You know the 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 execs in in Facebook are are quoting McLuhan and the and the global village, which is really fascinating. Which really kind of shows what's going on in their head. Yeah, I, it's. I mean, I, I'm definitely like I would. I think you have better vantage point to think about the kind of the the trajectory of of these kinds of environments over time. You've done a lot more in in, mm. in the. I have, but one thing, I mean, that's certainly animated in the discussion and in, in the circles mm-hmm. that, that you and I, you know, intersect with uh, in the last month, in the last two weeks, even yeah. just with, with the, you know, since the name change and the, and the, uh, the demo um, yeah. is, which I, which by the way, I think is sort of like the mother of all demos too. Two, you mean like part two? No, no, no. It's like, you know, the Douglas Engelbart's mother of all demos, you know, the, you oh, know it, it, at SIGGRAPH and that sort of thing, kind of like showing the, in, in a way, I, I'm saying this ironically, this is almost the mother of all demos 2.0. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I think it's, it's funny that it's not funny, it's sad, but there's, there's already a well-deserved, um, picture of big tech and silicon valley and billionaire ceos of um, increasingly focusing on methods of escape Um, yeah if you think about you know escape to space uh with bezos and musk or um zuckerberg of course you know i mean this this plays right into that same narrative of You know the the planet is becoming toxic, yeah. Uh, due to primarily the the um, the endless growth machine that is capitalism, of yeah. which Mark Zuckerberg is one of the history's most capable um, operators of. Right. And, um, the the construction of the the the, the picture of of this like cartoon universe, yeah. um, virtual reality escape 
platform that really, you know, mostly I think about it as uh, in terms of kind of like the, the, the workplace product, the horizon, um, horizon, some horizon workspace, I think they call it the, right. the, the 3D, you know, cause he talks so much in the demo and in other spaces about, uh, you know, this is going to transform work. It's going to let us be remote, but be present and be co-present at the same time. And right. you know, I can't help but think about what it's constructing is the, the most sophisticated employer surveillance machine ever, ever. Of course. Imagined, that it not only would, um, you know, literally take over your face. Yeah. Uh, literally, uh, you know, consume your, your physicality during the workday but right. would be able to track all kinds of biomarkers, all kinds of biodata from you, you know, your temperature, yeah. your heart rate, whatever it might your, be. Your days. Be able to, track to the millisecond, exactly what you yeah. look at, exactly how long you look at it. And that this is getting pitched and that anyone, anyone in tech journalism, in science, in, in people who kind of like in futurists, um, look at this and see anything but true danger. Um, uh, I don't. It boggles my mind a bit, quite quite frankly. Yeah, um, you know, even as someone who's put on an Oculus, I mean, I have you know at my lab, I have an Oculus uh, Go and yeah, um, play with it. You know, <laughs> like but. Because uh, I want to know what it is. I want to be able to. to yeah, exactly. I mean, still in the McLuhanist, you know, trope and that sort of thing is that on one hand, I'm fascinated yet horrified at, at, at it at the same time. You know, so, I mean, that's, you, you know, there's, a, there, there's, a, yeah, there's this uncomfortable fascination, you know, with, with these things that you, you know, you know, um, and say like Jaron Lanier's, you know, first ideas for this were pretty utopian. And now he's, you know, he's, he's pretty much one of the biggest Luddites on the planet, you know, and, you know, he's, you know, pretty much the father of, father of contemporary VR. And, yeah. and he's just saying like, ah, uh, you know, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, he's, he's definitely changed his tune over the years and, oh yeah, um, you know, the, I've played plenty of Beat Saber, you know? Oh, I, yeah, um, but I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, I can, I like Beat Saber and a little uh, Imagine Dragons and that's fine, yeah. you, know? you know, but yeah, but you know, that, you know, that, that, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't take you over the tracks, you know? Well, and for me, it's, it always comes down to this this question of private versus public and of course. The, the, the central problem that I always talk about when people ask, you know, what do we do about Facebook or what, you know, how are we going to do something different? It's like the problem, there's, there's plenty of problems with the tech. There's plenty of problems with how that software is designed, how it's imagined, but the, the right. central problem is that it's privately owned and it's profit driven yep. and, and that we have a society let mm this technology take over what should be yeah. centralized infrastructure, actually push right. out centralized infrastructure and replace it such that well, now replacing Facebook, commons. Replacing right. commons. Right. Yeah. So now Facebook goes down, you know, like half the I mean the global south has no communication. Right. And, yeah. You yeah. Know, and it's for people to not be able to like look up their their latest like count, their latest friend count, but it's another yeah. when you can't communicate with your family and your workplace and your. Well, family. you know what? This is this is this is exactly the thing. Is that I mean because, um, you know, half my family is in Iran, and you know we we speak over you know uh, over um, WhatsApp, you know part of part of the part of the meta universe. And, uh, you know, and the other thing is, is that one of one of the main channels that, uh, you know, Iranian discussion is um, uh, Instagram. Yeah, there's, you know, there, there are where your eyes cast about that. And, you know, just for my general situation, I think that's about all I should say about that, you yeah. know, so, but, you know, but that's merely I'm making a point of that basically in, in regards to the intersection of the bio info state and the bio state, you know, which is 
you know, which is, which is deep and profound, you know, and the thing is, is that um, I, I think really what, you know, in, in our conversation is kind of looking at this at becoming a fundamental reality layer between the individual and, you know, um, physical reality. You know, in other words, all uh, kind of like, um, was it um, Kichi uh, Matsuda's um, hyper reality, uh, you know, AR, you know, AR um, yeah, yeah. video was, you know, when it's just, you know, you're just constantly bombarded with games and ads and all that sort of thing. You're seeing the world, but, you know, yeah, then, then your gig boss, you know, calls you and from, from China and says, you know, I want you to go do this and she's in Colombia. And, you know, just, uh, it's, it's a really, it's a really interesting piece, but you know, what the thing is, is he's really showing, you know, where I, I, I think a really feasible terminal point, you know, of, of this, um, you know, informatic layer, you know, basically insinuating is, uh, uh, between, you know, the, the human body and physical reality while still, See, the thing is, is that I, I, I think the notion of the matrix as the idea of, you know, kind of like the Baudrillard and simulation replacing. And in some ways, you know, I think this meta, I, meta idea that, uh, you know, through Facebook horizons is um, actually, I don't, th I don't think it's as uh, possibly pernicious as, you know, the, you know, the possibility of having this, uh, you know, this hybrid AR world you know, that, you know, that overlays, you know, data on everything, you know, and metricates everything. Um, so the thing, the thing is, I'm just, I'm, what I'm really sort of wondering is how, um, where, we're, where, where we're going to be in, in 20 years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good question to ask. And I think it's a question that needs to be asked now rather than 20 years from now. Yeah. As, as too many of um, too many of the people who have big barrels of ink, um, as we used to call it, yeah, uh, you know, didn't ask these questions 15, 20 years ago, and, and just championed the the entrepreneurial spirit of Silicon Valley. And, oh, and you know what? Yeah, that brings that that brings us up. I mean, this this is this is sort of like this is sort of like the end game of the Californ Cali um, Cali California California um, ideology. I mean, we'll see, right? I mean, yeah. I think I've been reading a, a biography of Peter Thiel. In the last okay, few, there's sure. a new book that came out. Peter Thiel being the first big investor in Facebook, and then right the creator. PayPal, co-creator of PayPal, creator of Palantir, uh, big venture capitalist, and then eventually big champion of Donald Trump. And yeah, uh, the there there is a. It used to be the case that you had Silicon Valley as a a celebrated sector of the American economy, right? And especially as post two thousand one. Um, in, in the United States after 9-11, you know, you start to see over the next few years, Google, Amazon really rising, eventually Facebook enters the scene. Um, yeah. and, and even as 2008 happened, you know, the Silicon Valley was kind of this, for many, thought to be seen as, as, uh, as, as the shining light on the hill, I suppose, to yeah. put a terrible uh, metaphor on it. And, Nowadays, of course, since 2016, um, a bunch of people who could have been looking at any moment and could have listened anytime they wanted to a lot of people who were focused on the, the negative aspects of what Silicon Valley was building for all those years. Um, yeah. They woke up after 2016 with the Donald Trump election. And, um, and so the tone towards Silicon Valley has really changed. But the watching the mecha, the the machinations, uh, the machinations of the Silicon Valley's um, intersections with power um, over that period of time has been pretty uh, instructive. I think to watch mm. the way it, you know, it used to be. I think mm. that 
a lot of people would think of Silicon Valley, San Francisco is kind of a, a, a liberal industry, mm -hmm. and, you know, a left industry, supportive of the left. Right. Uh, certainly with the, you know, the, the Barack Obama kind of years, it was, they were aligned in Barack Obama being kind of the first social right. media presidency. And well, and if you think about uh, John Perry Barlow's, uh, you know, declaration of uh, independence of cyberspace, which was very sort of like left libertarian. Yeah, I mean, and this is the thing, right? There's always a libertarian bent in there yeah. too. Um, I mean, it, some of this is just myth, right? Um, yeah. But I mean, there was, I think there's maybe some truth to it, but the, certainly what's come very much to the foreground uh, in the 2015 and on period is uh, the ways in which big tech and certainly Facebook right in the center of it, um, the, the most significant player in it is a, a tremendous amplification of the right and yeah. and the integration of um you know, i mean you know mark zuckerberg literally having dinner with donald trump making a deal for him to go after TikTok, a competitor of facebook right. and a competitor of instagram in exchange for um there not being regulation any new big regulation on facebook i mean it's those kinds of deals that a company like Facebook is willing to make because it doesn't really matter who's in power. It just matters that they're in some power and that power can be manipulated for its purposes. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure. And, and, and the amplification, you know, through the amplification of affect. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this goes back to what we were talking about a little bit before in terms of like yeah. who controls the eyeballs and, and, and what yeah. people see of the world. And, um, you know, f there's been some nice analyses uh, in the last couple of years here of, of kind of like what kind of material is popular on Facebook, what right. kind of material spreads on Facebook. And it turns out Facebook is um, significantly far to the right of Fox News in terms of kind of the, the, the majority of, of information that, that mm -hmm. has traction on the platform. And, you know, partially when you build uh, a platform with all of the um, designed um, mechanisms to induce engagement. That's all that really matters is the right. induction of engagement because more time on site is more data, which is more profit. Of course. And, um, so you end up in this situation where they build mechanisms where they, for example, it just came out in the Facebook papers that um, when they released, when they put reactions and they added angry, ha ha, wow, sad, love yeah. to like, um, they valued the angry five times more than a like. So literally in the algorithm. So the, something that gotten angry was valued was five times more likely to resurface on, on the newsfeed for other people than something they got to like. And I mean, it doesn't take my, my first year students that I work with. Yeah. Now, you know, just after a few discussions, right. They get that, um, that design will, um, is productive of polarizing speech. You know, mm -hmm. what it does is it conditions users to do things that get an angry reaction. Yeah. Because the angry gets more visibility. And right. it's, it's, it's an environment with artificial scarcity where your ability to be in someone else's feed is controlled by the algorithm that you can't really truly understand. Uh, a, so positive, can't a, positive feed, a positive feedback loop, loop of anger. Right, so, that, so they know what they're doing. Yeah, they're, they're animating people into um, opposition, and then they they use the opposition to animate more people into opposition, mm -hmm. and, and, and mostly into more time on site and, and into more yeah. production data for the and, platform. And and I think I think also there was another document. There was um, in um, Sarah Cook's uh, curatorial, curatorial project Sleep. There, I think there was a document that was re released. That was talking about uh, Facebook considering the final, um, you know, impediment to its business model is the idea that human beings need sleep, and how yeah. do we get into that? You know, how do we how do we get how do we get into this sleep time? You know, it's like we we're you know we're gonna have we're gonna have seven billion eyeballs. Let's see here, uh, eighteen hours a day. How we can get how can we get at that other six? And that's where Musk comes in with uh, Neuralink. Absolutely. Um, I think about TikTok a lot in this realm too. The uh, 
uh, you know, I don't mean to bring a whole other platform into the conversation, but sure. TikTok now having just crossed a billion users, being yeah. often the most downloaded app on, on the app store in the United States. And, you know, getting lost in and losing sleep as a result of the TikTok feed is so right. common that it is a meme on TikTok itself <laughs> that, that, you know, perpetuates, uh, yeah. you know, that, that picture of someone who says, I'm going to watch five minutes of TikTok before I go to bed. And, and it turns into six hours. And it's like, and now it's light outside. And, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and this, it, again, it's, it's like when, when our, primary in some ways and for many people are only ways of accessing digital information are controlled by a platform or are accessed through a platform that's designed not to inform but to engage yeah. right to produce engagement it's just a precarious situation where um i mean it, it does that well and it means that it's always um, optimizing for something that isn't about user well-being as well no, it's, like it's, it's for its own sake of course, and, you know. and it, it's unavoidable. I mean, it's they, with, with, with the profit motive and especially with the centralized power that a company like Facebook yeah. has, there's no way for it to be any other way, I'm afraid. So I'm, I'm almost thinking of uh, one of the lyrics from, uh, you know, the classic blues tune that was taken over by Devo called working in, in a, working in a coal mine. You know, and I'm just saying, it's like, oh, Lord, how long can this go on? You know, and I, I mean, mean this, this isn't sustainable. No, it's not. I mean, it's funny. You know, uh, I say it's funny. It's not funny. The, there's been discussions in the last couple of weeks since the, the metaverse uh, demo yeah. uh, about gold farming as a as an, people bringing up gold farming as an opportunity. Like, hey, that's an, it'd be a new opportunity for people who don't have job opportunities to like make things for the metaverse and it's like it's and you know in, in 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 the post automation world in the metaverse it you know i, I yeah. yeah it's so mind blowing to me that that could be brought up as a good thing um yeah well this this is this is this is the way to get past automation i i i i think you're right it's it's a way well it's a way to yeah make sure people are perpetually uh, endlessly tied to jobs that are mostly out of their control right of automation yeah yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole idea of automation was sure. that it would automate and make more opportunity for people right. to not have to do those jobs in the first place yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but i think i i actually think that there are some people are saying it's like yeah, actually we we can't we can't have everybody you know, uh, having endless leisure, we can't have the Star Trek universe. This, this can't work, you know, so yeah. we have to, we have to figure out something to do. So in other words, that then let's, 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 let's make up, you know, let's make up a, a parallel protocol in which that, you know, in which then people can ex exert labor on ephemeral capital. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a second layer of, ca of capital. I just had that realization. And I just went, great googly moogly. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I hope it isn't the case. Power that relies on endless growth has to keep people in the system. Yeah. Um, there can't be alternatives. No. Alternatives must be crushed. This is why monopoly power is yeah. um, so attractive. Um, yeah. So, well. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> does does that does this does that leave us off on a a wonderful uh, dystopian uh, end note? Maybe. We knew this might happen, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, I, well, you know what? I I think I think I want to be a little bit more upbeat in saying that. Um, I can do. I can do a little. A little bit, okay. I can do a little. You know, what? What do you think? You know, in in other words, you know, but in other words, but potentially, you know, I, I think that there are little glimmers of hope in the. Was it? Uh, there are. 
I mean, and, and maybe we should talk about a few of them so people don't just leave this conversation, you know, ready to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I think I think Glasgow, you know, had a few glimmers of hope in it and that sort of thing. So, I mean, I think what's going on here is that I think that there are people who are understanding that, you know, the current set, the, the current the current system. And I'm not just saying capitalism, but I'm saying the current system is toxic, you know, for everything, you know, and we have to we have to find alternatives. I mean, if if we were to go back to 2015, yeah, and if if Facebook could have put on a metaverse demo in 2015, yeah, um, it would have been treated really differently, and it would have been treated been treated differently by the press in particular, um, which has a lot to do with how these Silicon Valley narratives end up playing out. Um, you know, there's just so much more criticality around what a Facebook is doing and how it does it than there was years ago, um, such that things that are, you know, ways of thinking and, and critiques of, 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 of Silicon Valley practices and, and mechanisms and methods. Right. That and, were and we're not, we're not, by the way, we're not even, I'm just going to touch on a, a gorilla in the room just at the moment, just a moment. We're, we're, we haven't even touched crypto. Yeah, yeah, and we could we could talk about that. We could for go sure. for an hour on that, yeah, but you know, but that's it, and they're and they're very related, no doubt. Yeah, um, but you know, no. critiques that are were that I've been engaged in conversations around for a decade in in everything from you know platform software studies, code studies, media sure. studies, etc. Right. Um, now I hear things that. We, I only would have heard out of people in academia five years ago, just like leading stories in major media publications. Yeah. And, you know, now they're not, they don't go as deep as I want. And they're, they're still too, um, many of them are still too willing to kind of get sucked into, you know, like proximity producing kind of complacency, mm -hmm. um, proximity to power producing complacency. But uh, but still, it, it's a much more critical environment, such that uh, that a Frances Haugen happens. You know, it's, it's not that what she's done in particular is is. I mean, the the information that's come out of the archive she's presented is not like it was unknown material. But seeing it written down, <laughs> seeing that it's not just that we knew Facebook was doing it, but here it <laughs> says it that they knew. <laughs> But I mean, but I mean, it, it isn't it isn't any different than other forms of capital like tobacco or, or petrol or anything like that. You know, I mean, it's 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 totally in line with everything else. It's 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 the model repeating itself again. So so, you know, on so that's one optimistic note, which is that there is so much more scrutiny and there's yeah. so much less um, willingness to accept the narrative that they want to put forward for not just the future and what they want to do in the future, but for where they are in the present and right. for what they've done in the past. And, yeah. and that makes possible. The reason why I find it interesting is, is I think it does make possible the imagination of alternatives. Uh, right. Right. Or is much more difficult, but the, the imagination is where it has to start. And I think that is activated in new ways. Yeah, I think so. And you know, what would be interesting is, is that if there was regulation of, of, well, I mean, talking about the algorithm is actually talking about a, a chimera, you know, um, of different, 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 different algorithms that all communicate with each other. But, you know, just say instead of having, you know, a, a you know, one place that could be could be intervened is instead of having a five times on angry is a five times on love. <laughs> right now, you I know, think that's super right. simple. It's yeah, it is, and it's it is the kind of super simple thing they could afford to play with. Um, yeah, they won't. But I agree with you. I mean, just was two days ago. Um, a bill was released. At least I read about it two days ago. Um, but a, a draft piece of draft legislation in the U.S. was released that um, would make uh, require companies who have feeds that have like I don't remember what it was, maybe a million plus users, right. to offer an algorithmic free version of that feed mm. and, you know the draft as often legislation around tech is in on capitol hill was 
not as informed as it needed to be to actually be a useful piece of legislation, but it's also just a first draft. I don't, and maybe it goes nowhere, but who would have, that would have been, that's an impossible. That was, uh, that was science fiction six years ago. Yeah. Uh, no. So there, there's, there, there is a level of recognition, I think, even amongst those in power that, in, in political power, that yeah. algorithmic power, <laughs> information yeah. power, yeah. Is, exceeds political power. Yeah. Uh, it creates political power, or, or yeah. is a good way to put it. Um, or, you know, or, or is constraining of political power at the very least. And right. if you actually care about maintaining your power and you're in politics uh, and that's your game, yeah. you need well, I mean, more. <laughs> yeah, at, at, at the base, it, it, it matters. Now, on one hand, in, in this idea that, you know, somehow technology is neutral or benign, you know, it's, it's, we, I, I'll just say, I won't say it's not neutral. You know, in other words, you can't, you know, it's a lot easier to plant a flower with a, with a shovel than an AK-47, you know, but they're both, you know, I mean, the wheel is a technology, you know, oil pan is a technology. I mean, it's yeah. this idea that, you know, we have this, 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 this blanket meaning for, for technology as being this neutral, new, neutral affordance, you know, that, that allows humanity to do something more than it could without it. And, but, you know, with, without looking critically at it. Absolutely. You know, and, and the answer to that is we need more. Always. That's always the <laughs> you know, answer. You know, that, that's it. You know, technological, you know, technological problems create, you know, uh, further technological solutions, which create more technology. You know, it's, it's once it's, again, we go back to McLuhan, which so is, beautiful. you know, which, which, which is what Facebook is, uh, you know, the, the Facebook uh, execs are, you know, spouting um in their in their own in their own speeches in inside you know one thing that i um another thing that came out of making the film mm -hmm. uh the zuckerberg film is you know there's for years and years one of the things that mark loved to talk about was how few engineers he had to hire and employ right. to serve so many users and he would always compare it to his competitors um you know, Google has to has 10 times the number of engineers to serve their user base as we do, whatever. We're so efficient. We're so good at it. And, you know, that, of course, stopped in 2016 and 2017 when he all of a sudden started getting hauled in front of the Congress and being asked to answer for why did you let all of this happen? Mm. And his answer was, we're going to hire so many people. We're going to get so many people involved. It's just going to be. And he's saying it with the metaverse now, too, right? It's like right. we're going to hire 10,000 new engineers or whatever it is. We're gonna hire more, right? You know, it's like, yeah. Which flavor of more? It's like, where does he apply his more yeah. solutions? Um, yeah, just, you know, yeah. He'll try and ones. and I think I think you're right. I think really kind of the hope is the fact that, you know, just at a certain point, you know, uh, I I kind of say it's it's like, you know, you 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 love chocolate chip ice cream, but the thing is, you kind of get sick of it after about the twentieth gallon. And I think, you know, and, you know, you've, you put on 50 pounds and, you know, you're, you know, you're just, you know, you know, you're diabetic and, and that sort of thing. It's, but, you know, it's like, and you just kind of realize that, you know, what this, what this stuff that you used to love so much that, you know, they're just giving you as much of a, you know, as you want is, is, is not healthy. Well, not only that though, it's also that you've become so used to eating it that it's hard to not. Yeah. And I think. You know, you just become what you got used to. You get habituated to it. Yeah. This is where I think, you know, it's part of the reason I focus on metrics and interfaces is they condition us to not only always be focused on how do we get better metric performance, which is in service of the system, but they teach us that it's logical to evaluate our own sociality through metric terms in the first place. They normalize that idea. Mm -hmm. You know, if I go back, 20 years ago and I went to a party on Friday and then I'm sitting around Monday thinking about the party. I'm not thinking about exactly how many people laughed at each joke. Right. But, exactly. And, and I'm not, if I, if I put out a, a new piece of music in, in 1995 um, and in the first 10 minutes, people don't think it's the greatest thing they ever heard. Right. I'm not going to use that as a reason to destroy it. 
you know, to, to think I must have done something bad. But the, the design of the systems have taught us and conditioned us, uh, conditioned us generally to presume that poor metric performance means bad. Um, yeah. As if experimental ideas were always going to be popular immediately. It's like, uh, think of any artist that you admire from history and then think about the reaction to their work in the first 10 minutes of its existence. And if they had used that as the only reason to decide whether it would stay or whether it would go, and we'd have well, nothing. We'd like. Pavlo Pavlovian, Pavlovian algorithmic social um, conditioning. Yeah, in yeah. service of just the generation of, of endless material for, yeah. yeah. In, ser in service of the long tail. Yeah. That's it. Well, I'll tell you what, we've, we've, we've had quite a ride. <laughs> it's a little funny how we try to go around to the, we're, we can be optimistic. We can end on an optimistic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard, but, hard to land the, the plane right at the right moment, but. Yeah. There yeah. are good signs, then there's things to worry about, and then it's, it's probably it's, yeah. it's and I, around. you know, I, I think I think I think one person to think of is maybe Fuller. You know, is the idea is like you know, is is that a bet you know a better world and a better design is you know is yeah I mean this lands is almost at solutionism, but the idea of like maybe positive solutionism, you know, and the idea of it's like the idea of like trying to trying to create better well trying to create better worlds and this is kind of like what gray area was talking about you know with the this idea of like quality of heart talking about simulationism and then um and then transfer and and uh, gray area talking about reworlding you know in other words the idea of like reworlding and in, in notions of systems of care and so the thing is is like uh, you know i see i see the you know the the later generations you know and them thinking about you know the um, you know the the cybersphere you know in these in these terms and i'm saying it's like well you know what at least that you know that's hopeful that's hopeful you know and i you know i i hope it you know i i hope it i hope it goes in those directions me too well,